So we examined a number of verses that speak about the imama, khilafa, wazir, you name it, whatever word you want, the Quran mentions previous precedents that God is the one who chooses them. After examining Quranic verses, the main ones, there are many other verses, but now we will continue to the hadith. Let's examine narrations and hadiths that are accepted by all Muslims, by Sunni and Shia sources, which demonstrate that the Imam was appointed by the Prophet on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet made very clear who his Khalifa is going to be. The first hadith that we will discuss is called Hadith al dar or Hadith Al-Ashira, the Hadith of the house or the Hadith of the Ashira. Ashira is the clan of the Prophet his family members, his relatives. This is a very important Hadith. We have this Hadith which I will share with you the source of this Hadith shortly which is attributed to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in which he stated that when Allah revealed the following verse in the Quran, Surah Ash-Shu'ara verse 214, God commands the Prophet to warn and preach to his close relatives. He says the Messenger of God called on me, Imam Ali is narrating this, the Messenger of God called on me. And he told me, O oh Ali, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to meet my relatives and tell them openly about Islam. In the early days of Islam, the Prophet ﷺ was quite low profile. He would not publicly preach Islam. He would be worshipping Allah, Imam Ali, Lady Khadija السلام, and just a small group of companions. The Prophet would not go publicly and preach in those first three years after being sent as a Prophet and receiving revelation. After the three years, the Prophet went public. Now before the Prophet went fully public with his mission, Allah commanded him to start with his relatives. O oh, Messenger of God, before you go public, start with your relatives, gather them and inform them that you have been sent by God to preach this religion and you want their support. Yes. Is it true that Imam Ali was a teenager at that time? Yes, the Imam, the Imam alayhi salam when the Prophet received wahi was 10. He was 10. So when this happened, the Imam was a teenager. Maybe he was 12, 11, 12, 13. Yes, the Imam alayhi salam was a teenager. He was very young. Now some schools of thought consider this as a naqs, they consider this as a deficiency in Imam Ali, right? He was a boy, so his Islam didn't count. Whereas this is a virtue for Imam Ali, that even though he was a boy, the Prophet ﷺ paid so much attention to him. If he's just a boy and so his belief doesn't really count, why does the Prophet ﷺ pay so much attention to him? In fact, that tells you this is not a normal boy. This is a very important person. Subhanallah, even the arguments they use against Imam Ali, in reality, they're virtues for him. So the Imam says, the Prophet called on me and he told me, God has now commanded me to gather my relatives. And I know it's not going to end well, but Allah is commanding me and God has threatened me. If you don't do this, you will be punished. You, Ya Rasulullah, you have to gather your relatives and you have to publicly declare the religion of Islam to them and ask them to support you. Even if they will resist, you have to do this. So Ali, go and invite them. I want to invite them for dinner. You prepare the dinner, slaughter a sheep, have the meat cooked and also prepare milk so we give them. Imam Ali السلام, takes care of this. Subhanallah, imagine a young boy, a teenager, yet the Prophet ﷺ is treating him like his manager, like his representative, right? You don't send a little boy to invite your uncles, do you? Unless that boy is what? Very special, very high ranking. In fact, isn't that an insult? If you want to invite your uncles and your family members, people whose beards are white, you send them a little boy? 
That's disrespect. Unless you're trying to make a point, that boy represents me a hundred percent. Look at the status that Allah gives to Imam Ali alayhi salam. So he goes and he invites them, they gather in that house, the Prophet is inviting them. Once they eat, everyone's full, Allah puts the barakah in that food and in that milk, the Prophet breaks it to them. Oh my dear relatives, I am bringing you the best religion. No Arab man has ever brought such an amazing message like I am bringing to you. So I want your support. Who amongst you is willing to support me, to stand with me, and in return, they will be the following. Akhi, they will be my brother. That person will be my brother. Wawasiyi, my successor. Wa khalifati fikum, and will be my khalifa. My brother, my wasi, my khalifa. Who is willing? Imam Ali salam says there were about 40 of them there. About, salamu alaykum. About 40 of those relatives of the Prophet there. The first time, everyone was quiet. No one said anything. There was resistance, even from Bani Hashim. In fact, Abu Lahab started mocking the Prophet. The Prophet said it twice, said it three times. Every time the only person who would respond was Imam Ali salam. He would say, Ya Rasulullah, I am willing to support you and be your brother and be your wasi and be your khalifa. So after the third time, when the Prophet saw that no one came forward with their support, he took Imam Ali salam and he put his blessed hand on his neck to show the closeness to him. And he said, then bear witness that he is my brother, my wasi, my successor, and my khalifa, my representative. This is the hadith of Adar or hadith al-Ashira. The Prophet explicitly mentions wasi and khalifa. This is direct evidence that the Prophet had made it known who his khalifa is. On what basis did Muslims after the Prophet go and select their Khalifa, some of them? On what basis? When the Prophet has already declared Imam Ali السلام, as his Khalifa. What is the source of this hadith? The source of this hadith, you have Tarikh At-Tabari, volume 2, pages 63 to 64. He mentions this hadith. We also have Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who narrates it with a chain which is reliable. Every narrator in that chain is a reliable narrator. Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Musnad volume 1 page 159 and also page 111, he mentions it twice. Yeah, that's one of the most important Sunni works of hadith. I mean in this class if we have a book. No, we don't have a book in the class. So this is the Musnad of Ahmed ibn Hanbal. It's a very respected Sunni source and we have Tabari, and we have tens of other sources. So there is no doubt about the authenticity of this hadith. Now, notice this interesting observation. Tabari, this Sunni author, Sunni scholar, he has two books. He has his Tarikh, which is a book on Islamic history, and he has his book of Tafsir, Tafsir al-Tabari, in which he examines the Tafsir of the Quran. In his book, Tarikh al-Tabari, he mentions the full uncensored text of the hadith in which the Prophet says, he will be my brother, when he referred to Imam Ali, and my wasi, and my khalifa. This is in his tarikh. When he came to his tafsir, he censored the hadith. You know what he said? When the Prophet referred to Imam Ali, the Prophet said, he is my brother وَكَذَا وَكَذَا and so and so. He omitted the words Khalifa and Wasi because he found them problematic words. Clear indication that Imam Ali is the Khalifa and the Wasi of the Prophet. So in his tafsir, he censored it. <laughs> when he talks about the Khilafah, he censors it. 
It may have been possible, but many scholars have went back to very early sources and it seems that he's the one who censored it. It could be the case that maybe the scribes who reproduced the book, that is a possibility, but indications are that he is the one who censored it because he didn't like the content of the hadith and that happens quite often in a lot of these books unfortunately. Even until today in Egypt and elsewhere in Saudi Arabia you find books reprinted and sometimes some of these hadiths are censored. Isn't it Tariq al-Tabari taught in high schools like in Egypt? Yes, yes, Tariq al-Tabari is a mainstream is book mainstream? on Islamic history. It's one of the most important works on Islamic history. So, and that's not the only source that we have. We have Mus Ahmed ibn Hanbal in his Mustad and a range of other sources. There's no doubt about the authenticity of this hadith. Now look at the Prophet He is dealing with such a sensitive issue with his relatives, which is Islam, Tawheed, calling them to Islam. Know how important Imama is, the representation to the Prophet, such that in that sensitive gathering, the Prophet makes it known who his Khalifa is. What does that tell you about Khilafah? It's so important that from day one, the Prophet paid attention to it and he made it clear who his Khalifa was. That's extremely important. Whereas when you look at other schools of thought, no, Khilafah is just a secondary issue. And as we examined before in the last few weeks, they even consider it a fiqhi issue, you know, a legal issue. We can have our differences and it's subject to ijtihad. It's not part of the aqidah. It's not part of the aqidah, but the Prophet has to mention it in that particular gathering, which was so important. Yeah, we examined that. We examined that in the previous weeks. Yes, that is, a, that is one argument that we presented in detail.